New polling shows 61 percent say they believe Joe Biden was involved in his son Hunter's business dealings while serving as vice president. Now, remember, the president has said over and over and over and over and over he didn't have anything to do with those business dealings. Nearly 70 percent of people say Biden did something illegal. 55% say he acted inappropriately. None of it good. The New York Post cover putting it bluntly. There is no hiding from the scandal. These numbers come as special counsel David Weiss is prepared to indict Hunter Biden on gun charges later this month. Why he didn't do it yesterday when he announced it, we don't know. But Hunter's attorney and liberal media now saying in concert they're just caving to Republican pressure. It looks like the heat that's put on by the Republican congressmen who want to interfere in the normal course of what the Justice Department does puts up the heat. Where else, other than a case in which they are cowering from the political pressure, would somebody be charged with something yeah. that's unconstitutional? DOJ has given me whiplash on this one. The only conclusion that I think is consistent with all this is that the whistleblowers were right, that initially DOJ was ready to go in there and give this deal away cheaply. And when the political pressure amped up, DOJ did a complete 180. Raymond Arroyo now, Fox News contributor. I want to get your top line thoughts on this. Well, Harris, first of all, you know, those polls don't mean a lot to me because whoever that 38 percent who believes this is inconsequential, they haven't been paying attention. Let's look at the facts. Look, the, the House Oversight Committee dug deep into the Biden financial records. They found 20 shell corporations. They found at least six direct policy outcomes after payments were made. And we're looking at something like $20 million in payments to this family, which no one can explain. This bears scrutiny. And when you take that and you, you marry it to the Hunter Biden laptop, the Ukrainian businessman coming out and saying, I bribed Joe Biden, but I had to do it through shell corporations. There is a lot of fire here because there's tons of smoke. Harris. So Anybody who can't see that hasn't been listening. Or it watching. is fascinating. You're zeroing in on the 38 percent of Americans in this polling that that say that this isn't a problem yet for them. And that's important because everybody else is looking at the bigger number. I think what yeah. you're getting at is why is it not zero? And it's a great yeah. question. Well, part of it's media coverage. I mean, we cover this story. Other media have had a blackout on this thing. But at this point, Norman Lear should be getting residuals because Biden <sighs> kept it all in the family, Harris. I wow. mean, this is not pretty, the way it's rolling out. All right, let's watch Senator John Fetterman challenging Republicans <laughs> to impeach President Biden. Hey, Terry. Yeah? Yeah, if you can find, if you can find the votes, you know, go ahead. And just, you know, you're going to lose. Your man has, what, three or four indictments now, and, and you're going to, so like, like I said, you know, like sometimes you just got to, you know, call their, call their bull****. Oh, mm. oh, yeah. And that, that was not on camera, obviously. Didn't matter. You still needed to bleep it. Raymond? Yeah. Thank goodness it weren't wasn't on camera. I mean, if anybody's going to talk about BS, I guess Fetterman's the right guy to do it. But uh, this is a poor man. He can't put three sentences together, Harris. I mean, he's impaired. God bless him. He can't serve his people right now who, who sent him to Washington. He's the last guy who should be commenting on the complexities of this case. Justice should be blind, OK? It shouldn't be uh, subject to public whim or where the polls are. The facts bear scrutiny. They need to be examined closely, no matter what John Fetterman or anyone else says. Well, look, when it comes to Hunter Biden and, and then the business deals and now Joe Biden and all of that, some might argue that justice isn't supposed to be blind as much as it is supposed to be fair, right? And that's kind yeah. of what you're saying. But this might be a case of justice wearing rose-colored lenses until now. Let's see if that indictment against Hunter actually happens. Like, why didn't they do yeah, it yesterday we will see. when they announced it? Okay, we'll move to this. A new report shows the Biden administration is considering dramatic action now on the border crisis. Oh, lean in. What now? The president is considering forcing illegal immigrant families to stay in Texas. Of course he is. He doesn't want to put pressure on those dim lead cities. Critics say he's looking to punish Texas for busing migrants to dim lead sanctuary cities, even though they make up a fraction of the 7 million the state of Texas has taken in. DHS not confirming or denying the report. 
the department telling Fox's um, uh, that they're uh, also discussing how to manage the crisis in a humane, effective way. The crisis overwhelming some Democrat-led cities now, as we know, reporting New York City schools were overwhelmed yesterday by the addition mm. to 21,000 illegal immigrant students in addition to its normal enrollment. In fact, some schools turned away students due to overcrowding. A pair of op-eds on the city struggles. One calls it New York's migrant meltdown. Another says, yes, Mayor Adams, the migrant crisis is destroying NYC, but you have to fix it. Raymond. Mm, I don't even know where to start here. I mean, Harris, I was just in New York. I was down at the Roosevelt Hotel, blocks mm -hmm. from where you are, where it, it is a migrant shelter now, this once venerable hotel, now choked with people around the block, on the streets. There are motorcycles and mopeds all around this hotel, which apparently, I'm told by officers, these migrants use to deliver food, deliver drugs, and deliver other migrants. I mean, this is very bad, what's happening in New York. But yes, New York rolled out the red carpet. It declared itself a sanctuary city, and then it established a right to shelter law. That word went out to all the South and Central Americans. So they're coming to New York, not because uh, Governor Abbott is sending them there. He only sent 13,000. There are more than 100,000 in New York City. Yeah. They're coming because they know they'll get free housing, free education, free meals. And now I'm told a pilot program will send them to another state and give them a job. This is remarkable what we're seeing. But it's not Abbott's fault. This is Biden's fault for leaving that border open. And uh, he's, he now wants the migrants to remain in Texas. They should remain in Mexico, as Trump had already laid out. That was a great policy, and it was working. It was an orderly means of immigration. This what you're seeing on your screen is a chaos. And that looks like the Roosevelt Hotel, by the way, outside on the streets of Manhattan. Outrageous. Wow. Look at that line. Goodness. Yeah. OK, let's get to the U.S. Open in New York City last night. <laughs> Climate activists tried to ruin it. And they did a pretty good job, too, because they took a long pause to get a guy out who would glued himself with crazy glue to the floor of the stadium. <laughs> Real fans in the stands calling for them to be kicked out. The match was helped, held up rather after protesters started screaming about fossil fuels. One, as I mentioned, glued his bare feet to the concrete floor of where he was sitting. There he is on the left of your screen. They couldn't move him. They would have had to slice his, you know, the bottom part of his feet to get him out. They finally figured it out. They took out four protesters and then delayed that match for more than 50 minutes. Just the latest example of climate activists disrupting everybody else's good time, our lives. Last month, they blocked the road to Burning Man. Remember that? Others have vandalized priceless, valuable artworks and dumped milk on store floors. Now, they have glued themselves to coffee, you know, coffee cafes, countertops. So I, I don't know what this fascination is with the toxic substance of glue that will do that. Yeah. The climate activists and environmentalists are gluing themselves. Harris, this is the uh, activism of a group called Extinction Rebellion. This is highly organized, millions of dollars to fund them. So this isn't just some, you know, one-off mm. group. Uh, I, look, I'm just delighted they didn't paste themselves to some, you know, priceless artwork and part of our Western heritage. So for that, I'm thankful. But they are the ISIS of activism. I mean, they destroy everything in their wake. This is kind of the least of their sins. But I was watching this match at the U.S. Open, and it was enraging, insulting to the fans, insulting to the athletes. It was in the middle of a of a major uh, bit of the, this competition. Yes, it was. 50 minutes of the game stalled. But you know what they should do, Harris? They should plaster the faces at the U.S. Open of the people who fund Extinction Rebellion. People like Rory Kennedy and Eileen Getty and Adam McKay, the director, put their faces up. That's who's responsible for this outrageous act of not only does it disturb the public, but it endangers precious artworks around the world and public safety. They should be stopped. This is way out of line. It's I'm, not activism. Well, and at one point, Coco Goff, who was the teenager last night, 19, the youngest American to mm -hmm. make it to that point since Serena Williams. And then you talk about being a pivotal point just in sports in general, but certainly for this country at its U.S. Open, 
goes over to the cameras. You and I were both watching this. Oh, so yeah. you remember that? She goes over and she says, I don't know why they're negotiating with this guy. Right. I mean, she's asking like all of our situation. questions to the media <laughs> right there. I, like, she had time, though. I mean, 50 minutes is a long time. All right. It's uh, awful. Well, it broke her stride. I mean, it, it, it may have ruined her game. Thank God it didn't. But, you know, this stuff just should not be allowed, Harris. Well, and, and Makova, who she was playing, events. it was both a first time in the semifinals for both those young women. I mean, mm -hmm. what a moment. Not to mention the score of the game, Coco won, and will be an American in the final. All right, good to see you. I agree. Great to see you, Harry. Let's see if they adjudicate the cases against the, uh, the disruptors. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.